Hello and good afternoon. I'm James Preston reporting live from Kalkine Studios in Sydney. It's lunchtime here and that means it's time for the Mid-Market Pulse. In this show we'll take a look at the overall Australian share market performance by the mid-session trade. We'll also explore the biggest winners and losers of the day. And in our final segment, we'll focus on stocks that have grabbed headlines today. So without further ado, let's get started. The Australian share market continued to trade lower by the afternoon after making a negative start led by a sharp sell-off in tech and industrial stocks. The weak cues from global peers also injected negativity in the market as investor sentiment was dampened by fears of potential corporate tax hikes in the United States. Investors also remained focused on Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe's speech on Delta's impact on the economy and also the monetary policy. In the last week, the monthly policy meeting, the Governor had warned that the coronavirus-led lockdowns would lead to a rise in the unemployment rate over coming months. However, Lowe maintained that the economy would rebound by the end of the year. The benchmark index, the ASX 200, was trading lower by 0.12% by lunch. During the day's trade so far, the index declined as much as 0.5% to hit a low. The market paired most of its early losses after a report from NAB revealed that business confidence improved slightly over the past month, but that it remained in a negative territory due to the COVID-19 restrictions. Business confidence in Australia increased to minus 5 points in August from minus 8 points in July of 2021. The data showed that business confidence improved in New South Wales as the vaccine rollout accelerated, while it dipped in Victoria due to the extension of lockdowns. On that note, let's take a look at some updates from the COVID-19 front. The fresh data showed that Australia continues to struggle to contain the highly infectious Delta variant as daily case counts remained high. New South Wales, the country's most populous state, recorded 1,127 locally acquired COVID-19 cases, along with two deaths in the past 24 hours, while Victoria registered 445 new infections. On the sectoral front, six of the 11 indices were trading in red, while tech and industrial indices were the worst performers. The tech sector declined by 1.6%, led by a fall in index heavyweights Afterpay, Zero, and Promedicus. Some of the other sectors that saw a surge in selling activities include industrials, healthcare, consumer staples and also consumer discretionary. Meanwhile, the energy sector continued gaining momentum for the third straight session by surging nearly 4% thanks to a rise in crude prices. The Brent crude rose 1.1% a barrel and US oil gained 1.5% a barrel. Among others, utilities, telecom and material sectors also witnessed buying activity. On this note, let's focus on the top gainers and losers by the mid-session trade. The top loser on the ASX pack was pooling solutions company Brambles with a 10.7% loss. Some of the other notable losers were medical device manufacturer ResMed, healthcare firm ProMedicus, refining business Illumina and buy now pay later firm Zip. As for the gainers, energy companies topped the gainers chart led by Beach Energy with a 7.2% gain. It was followed by sectoral peers Woodside Petroleum, AGL Energy, Santos and also Oil Search. And now before we move on to our next segment to explore stocks that grabbed investors' attention today, it's time for a very small break on the Mid-Market Pulse. Tune in to stay updated while on the move. We will tell you where the crypto craze has reached. Where the property market is headed next. What the world is doing to become more environmentally friendly. Apart from tracking the daily market charter. Be on top of the latest news and announcements with Kalkine TV. Hello and welcome back. It's great to have your company on Kalkine TV. I'm James Preston and this is the Mid Market Pulse. Moving ahead into the next segment, let's zoom our lens on shares that have grabbed headlines today. Let's begin with shares of Simic Group, which rose nearly 1% after a group company secured a contract extension. The group's engineering company, UGL, as a member of the Rail Connect New South Wales joint venture, has scored a $100 million Aussie contract extension from Transport for New South Wales. 
The contract covers increasing the size of the Murray Young fleet and installing an additional transformer at the maintenance facility at Kangiangi on the New South Wales Central Coast. Turning our attention now to hotel property investments. Shares of hotel property investments entered a trading halt pending an announcement. The company has signed an agreement to acqu acquire the Edwards Lake Hotel for, 100, uh, I should say, $28 million Aussie dollars. Adding to it, the company is in advanced stages on a second acquisition subject to final contract approvals, which is expected to be acquired for $7.9 million Aussie dollars. The company plans to undertake a fully underwritten institutional placement to raise $50 million to, to partially fund the acquisitions and associated cost transaction in conjunction with existing debt facilities. Another company that entered trading halts is the lithium explorer Vulcan Energy. The company plans to raise $200 million Aussie dollars at $13.5 per share in its placements. In addition to the placement, Vulcan intends to offer eligible existing shareholders the opportunity to participate in non-underwritten share purchase plans to raise up to a further $20 million. Proceeds from the offer will be used to accelerate exploration initiatives and expand its dual renewable energy and lithium development strategy. Next up, an MAAS Group shares were trading marginally higher after the construction materials and services provider unveiled its acquisition plan. The company has signed an agreement for the acquisition of an additional quarry in central Queensland, being the Earth Commodities Hard Rock Quarry operation in Gladstone. Shares of Seralto also rose nearly 2% on plans to acquire an e-commerce firm called Green Shoots Technology. The company has inked a share sale agreement to acquire a 100% stake in Green Shoots with an expected completion date of the 30th of September 2021. Green Shoots is a multilingual, multi-tenanted e-commerce platform that will complete and complement Seralto's retail intellectual property. Let's now take a look at Dreadnought Resources, whose share price rose over 2% after it raised 8 million Aussie dollars via placements. The shares were issued at 3.5 cents and at 5.5% discount to its last closing price. The placement funds will be used to build on recent success at the Tariji Yampi, Mangaroon and Ilara projects. Moving on now, shares of Bathurst Resources rallied nearly 14% after the coal miner raised its earnings guidance. New Zealand-based company has upgraded a bit to guidance from $65 million Aussie dollars to $95 million, citing the recent significance in hard coking coal prices. This is also supported by the release of an updated investor presentation post-financial year 2021 and results. Also, shares of Rhythm Biosciences rose over 5% after the Therapeutic Goods Administration accepted its manufacturer's evidence documentation. The medical diagnostics technology developer said this documentation is required for approval in Australia for Colostat and completes the first step for regulatory approval in Australia. And lastly, the share price of McMahon rose over 2% following a positive business update. The company has now finalised a $210 million Aussie dollar mining services contract with Calidus Resources for the Warrawoona Gold Project in Western Australia. This contract involves the development of a new open-cut mine in the Pilbara region. Well, that's all for now. Keep watching Kalkine TV for more trending market updates from Australia and around the world. I'm James Preston, signing off for now.